Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it is that time of the week. It is lecture time, and this week's lecture, guys, is a doozy. It's a good one. Why? Because so many of you out there are struggling with your trading, and what you're not understanding, what you're not realizing, is you're struggling with something that is very simplistic. Now, it's not necessarily easy to change because it deals with your emotions, but it's a very simplistic thing. So we're gonna talk a bit about trade management and money management, and we're gonna kind of put them together. And I think a lot of you out there, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, put the comments down below, you feel like I'm just so close to profitability, but, or at the end of the day or end of the week or end of the month, you're like, if I had just followed my trading plan, I would have made 20,000 this month, but instead I made a thousand bucks. Or maybe you lost a little money and you should have made a lot of money. And you're like, if I could just sort that out. Well, guess what we're gonna talk about today? That exact topic, why you're not making money yet and how you can sort that out in 30 to 60 minutes, okay? And it's gonna take a little soul searching. You're gonna to have to be objective with yourself. So if you're the type of person that likes to lie to themselves and lie to the man in the mirror, this isn't gonna work for you, okay? But if you're the type of person that can admit your mistakes, admit your errors, this will work really, really well for you, all right? 30 to 60 minutes to change your trading life, okay? We're gonna talk a little bit about management, a little bit about psychology, and how you can flip-flop all that to become a more profitable trader. If you like these videos, please click that like button, smash, hammer that subscribe button. I am Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's lecture topic is 30 minutes to profitability and you're like, what? Yeah, I know, it's a bit of a cheeky title. Um, you're not gonna go from zero experience in trading to profitability in 30 minutes. So I'm speaking a little bit to people that have some experience. Newer traders, this should help you as well. Um, but uh, there's definitely some things we're gonna talk about today that you can apply to your trading that in 30 to 60 minutes could definitely change the trajectory of your trading. Um, so that part of it's true. It's just that most of the time, like teenagers, you don't get it after the first time, right? You have to learn on your own through experience and trial and error because you think your parents are idiots and it's not till you're about 30 that you realize they weren't as dumb as you thought. All right, well, that's the same thing here in trading, right? You think the people giving you this advice maybe aren't as bright as you think, and then later on you realize they are. Um, it's kind of a, a roundabout compliment to myself, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, um, so we're gonna talk about that today, and we're gonna relate this a little bit to psychology, but also um, to trade management, all right? Uh, I did a similar lecture to this, but it was a long while back, maybe a couple of years ago, so it's been a while uh, since I've done this particular topic, but, before we get into that, we need to talk about when will the insanity stop. Now, this one's not as egregious uh, as last week's. Last week's, you know, somebody was down like $1.4 million and bag holding and adding all the way down, and that was pretty bad. Uh, this one's not that bad, but the concept of it is bad. And Joseph McCarthy, I hope you're around because this one's for you. Um, I don't understand it, but we have to, you know, people do weird stuff. So, hey, Jared, hope you're doing well. Happy Thanksgiving, by the way. I wanted some advice. I own 4,000 shares of CCL. I went away, and this is the best part, and neglected to place a stop loss. Yeah, it just, it happens. You know, like on Mall said, you go to place stop loss, and it just goes rejected, 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 rejected. I don't mind holding it, but when this turns around, can you see any obvious resistance I have to watch out for? I'm in at 24.35, and I believe CCL is around $18 right now. Um, so you have 4,000 shares, about $100,000 worth of this stock, and you are down $6, which is about 25%. So you're down about 25 grand. That seems about right. Because, quote, I went away and neglected to place a stop loss. Let's be honest, let's just call this what it is. You don't use stop losses. Don't kid yourself, don't lie to me, okay? I didn't fall off the turnip truck yesterday. You don't use stop losses, just like Joseph, okay? And yet you own 4,000 shares of a stock. Put 100 grand into something and not having any trading plan or any money management, it's just dumb. I can't think of any other way to say this. I can't sugarcoat it, it's just dumb, all right? I neglected to place a stop loss. Well then, 
Maybe next time I'll give you some real sage advice. Neglect to buy shares, okay? Do that. Don't buy any, all right? And you'll be in a better position than you are now because you're down 25 grand, all right? Now, some people think I'm an asshole when I do this. I'm not. I am actually really trying to help other people. If you feel like you're the type of person that's going to, quote, neglect to place a stop loss, then do yourself a favor and neglect to buy any shares of it. Just don't. Save yourself the trouble, all right? You're gambling. You're not a trader. You give the industry a bad name. You give traders a bad name, all right? So in the future, use better money management, all right? And then you want to know if there's any obvious re resistance I have to watch out for. I don't mind holding it. Well, of course you don't mind holding it. You don't have a choice to hold it right now. Duh. What if it goes down to 12? What if a new variant comes out and no one goes on cruises? Didn't they just have a vaccinated cruise ship with a whole bunch of people get COVID? Well, that can't be good for CCL. And I'm not an economist and I'm not even caring about the fundamentals. We're really talking about money management. My goodness, be smarter, be better, all right? Build back better. <coughs> all right, let's move along now. I love this mantra, okay? I love it because it's such BS. You can't go broke taking profits. You guys hear this one? I hear it all the time in some form or another. You can't go wrong taking profits. You can't go wrong selling a winner. I swear in my life, you hear this all the time. You can't go wrong selling a winner. You can't go wrong getting out for some green. Can't go wrong, can't go broke taking profits. This is exactly how the vast majority of traders do go. They go broke really in two main ways. There's various other ways, but it's two main ways. They don't take stop losses, Joseph. Okay, and they hold overnight and the stock goes against them and then they bag hold. That's what we just saw on the last slide. Okay, that's a lot of people, the majority probably. And the other people are the ones that are so jittery that they have to get out of the trade for a nickel or a dime or a quarter and um, they don't make much money. What do I mean by don't make much money? They don't make enough to cover their losses. They don't make enough to cover their losses. So you can't go broke taking profits is one of the most ridiculous things. If someone ever tells you that, run away. Don't walk away, run away from them, okay? And this one too, this is like that, you, you know, you can't go broke taking profits mantra, the simulator thing. Yo, bro, I'm up 50 grand in my paper account. Me, I've never met a losing paper trader. You know, we saw that, was it last week? Remember it was in the when will the insanity stop section. Uh, the person was like, you know, I keep trading this $1 stock and I'm up like $100,000. It can't be this easy. Well, no, it is in your paper account. It really is that easy. You get fake fills. You, you know, you try to buy 1,000 shares. The stock only prints 200 shares, but magically the simulator gives you all 1,000 shares, even though they never printed there, okay? You trade uninhibited, you know, you don't care. And you buy stuff you wouldn't otherwise buy. You manage differently. So if you're killing it, in paper, that's great, but don't think that that will directly translate. It's like, the best analogy I can give you is this. It's like being a great Forza, you know, for those of you guys who do the race car games, a Forza driver, and then actually going out on the racetrack. It's a little bit different, like night and day, okay? So a paper account is nice to learn the bells, whistles, buttons on your platform, but it's not a direct replacement for real trading, okay? so. This business is hard. Like, it's really hard. Like, it's really, really hard. Take the hardest thing you can imagine doing, and trading is probably harder than it. Unless it's balancing, like, 52 plates on your nose. You ever see those people that do that? That might be harder than this, okay? But nonetheless, it's one of the hardest things you'll ever do. And what makes it even more challenging, Joseph, is trade and money management. Most people don't have any. They don't follow anything. They don't have any trade or money management. And what happens is by the time they recognize what they should be doing, they've already cut half their stack out. Their, their account's half of what it should be. It's a third of what it should be. And then it makes it even more challenging. And the other aspect of it is you come in overhyped, right, with expectations that are just absurd. Like they're just beyond anything in reality. So your expectations exceed your experience. And you think, hey, I got three months, six months. That's the severance my company gave me. So I got to make this work in six months. The market doesn't care, right? It really just doesn't care. And you need to understand this. Your education at Harvard doesn't matter. The previous job you had, whether it's the CEO of a Fortune 500 company or digging ditches, it doesn't matter. None of it matters, okay? 
Money management is the only thing that matters when you're new. Simulators are not real. It's going to take way longer than you think. And shit happens. And actually, it happens quite a bit. Getting filled isn't easy. We get slippage. We get skippage. Sometimes you have an internet problem or a frozen platform or the market servers are down or HFT shakeouts, insane random news, Elon Musk tweets, blah, blah, blah. There's just so much external influence on the market. It makes our job even that much more challenging. There's no holy grail. So have a plan. But guess what? None of those things are really what I want to talk about today. You're like, well, then why'd you waste our time? Because I don't think I'm wasting it. All right. What I want to talk about today is more on the management side of things and how you guys, by selling too soon most of the time, and it's not even just selling too soon, it's just not following your plan, how you're costing yourself money. And let me explain. There's a good percentage of you out there that you actually, hold on one sec. There's a good percentage of you out there that you actually take good enough trades to make a living at trading. The trades you're in, the trades you take are good enough, but you mess them up. And I don't mean the stock symbol. I mean the pattern you took, the entry you took, the stop loss you took, you took all of that and you did a really good job. And then you mess it up with either not managing it properly or per your plan, or maybe over trading, like somebody yesterday said, their plan says they can't take more than, I think it was four or five trades in a day, and they've been taking over 20 a day sometimes. Well, if your plan says five trades a day, why are you taking 20? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And this is the part where I said, if you're not going to be objective with the man in the mirror, this isn't gonna work, right? If you're not gonna be honest with the person that looks back at you in the mirror, then go and do something else. Do something else where someone holds your hand and tells you what to do. You know, one of those time clock jobs where you clock in, clock out, go home, don't take your work with you. That's for you. Now, you can do fine in that job. You'll have a very nice, average, mediocre life. Maybe you'll have a house. Maybe you'll own two cars. And heck, maybe you'll even have a pool at your house with maybe even a little Boston whale or 18-foot boat. But if you want more than that out of life, you're going to have to reconcile the man in the mirror and recognize that I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. What do I need to do to make some change? And who's going to hold me accountable to that change? What will be the consequence? Because if you can't do that, then this isn't the, the business for you. I'm not trying to discourage you. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. If you constantly find yourself lying to yourself and saying, I'll be better next time after you've broken your plan for like the 7,000th time, it might not be right for you. So let's talk about this, guys. So we're going to use two are all or nothing here, okay? Versus, well, it says selling too soon, but it means versus something else, right? You, you being you, and I don't know why this entry is over here. Let's move that. Don't you hate that? Like first slide in, you're like, shoot, I made a mistake. All right. So we're going to basically look at six trades and we're going to look at the difference between what your plan has been accomplishing and what you are accomplishing. All right. And this is something, by the way, that every trader needs to do every month. You need to look back at the end of the month and go, what did my plan do? What did I do? I do it to myself now. I simply put a number at the, at the end of the day, on, actually not end of the day, on every trade that I take, there's a plus or a minus or a zero next to it. If it says plus 500, it means I beat my plan by $500. If it says minus 500, it means my plan beat me by 500. If it says zero, it means I followed my plan to the letter of the law. What's the goal? Zero. The goal is zero. Whether you won on the trade or lost on the trade, that column should just have a whole bunch of zeros in it because that means you followed your plan to the letter of the law. So let's take a look. We're not going to talk about whether or not these are good trades, even though they are good trades, but that's a different conversation. So we have a little buy setup right here. Lower high, lower high, lower high, bottoming tail, price support, rising moving average, change of color bar, doji bar. I mean, it's a pretty damn good buy setup. We're not going to talk about the quality though. You get in right here, your stop loss is down there and this thing rips, possible add area right here at 49.80. I'm just beautiful, just lovely, okay? Buy setup, this is what you did. Got out for a one R gain at 49.75. Actual P&L, 500 bucks, that's one R in this case. Trading plan made 1,000, why? It's two R all or nothing. Trading plan would have made two to one. 500 times two is 1,000. Okay. Did you follow the plan? No. What was the result? You cost yourself 500 bucks. 
So your plan beats you by 500. Okay. If we go over to the right, another nice buy setup, lower high, lower high, lower high, bottoming tail, rising, moving average, uh, change of color bar, doji bar, uptrend, beautiful. Okay. So you get in here, you stop here. Buy setup, got full target, actual thousand, trading plan thousand. Follow the plan, yes. Result, same as the plan. This is what every column should look like, same. Result versus trading plan, same, right? Same, okay? So, so far after two trades, you're down 500 bucks versus your plan, okay? Now, what about over here, all right? So here we have a little bit of a breakout. It's actually not a bad breakout, right? Right at 19 bucks, stop loss down here, moves higher, and then whap, right? And I'm not talking about the Cardi B song, okay? And then goes right back up. Now, we could talk about 84% play, but that's a different conversation for a different time. Failed breakout, full stop out with slippage. So you lost 1.2R, you lost 600 bucks. Okay, fine. That's what should have happened. Trading plan, lost 600 bucks. Followed the plan, yes. Result, same. So we've had three trades. Two out of three, you followed your plan. So 67% of the time, you followed your plan so far. Okay, now, breakout. Right here, $260, rising moving average, tight, narrow range, right, et cetera, and so forth. So you get in, exit it for a half hour gain. It's just too choppy, right? It popped, dropped, popped, dropped, and you got nervous. So you got out. Let's be frank. This shit happens. It happens. You get into a breakout. What do you say to yourself? Breakouts aren't supposed to do that. Breakouts are supposed to hit and run right? It's a hit and run. It's supposed to be like this up here at 300. You see how it broke above at 300 and just ripped to 332? That's what should happen on a good breakout, okay? But over here, that's not what actually happened, okay? What'd you do? You took it upon yourself to make an executive decision to get out. Your plan said you can't. You're not allowed your plan said two are all or nothing. Come hell or high water, I'm committed. You weren't committed. Once you saw the, the, the crappy break and then it tested again and it came back again, you're like, you know what, I'm getting out. And at that time, you probably felt good, especially right here as it kept just hanging around. You're like, all right, at least I got 250 bucks. What happens? It made, you got two on, two to one. So right here, follow the plan, nope. Now you're minus 750 bucks versus your plan on this trade. So now we have four trades and half the time you followed it two and half the time you broke it two. And so far, you haven't beat your plan yet. Does it happen from time to time? Sure it does. Every once in a while you get out of a trade and it stops out and you beat your plan a little bit, okay? But in this case, you didn't. And you know what? I like breakouts. I like three bar plays. I get it. I get it. This is not what you'd want to see. And I would make a comment about this and go, man, that's not a good break, guys. That's fine to say that, but what's your action? Well, the action is nothing because your plan says you're not allowed to do anything, right? So you wouldn't act on that comment. The comment is a reasonable comment. It should hit and run like up here. So saying it's not acting the way I like is fine, but what's your action saying? Stay in because my plan says to. You might have a plan that allows you to exit, perhaps, but this one doesn't, okay? So, next one. We have a little three bar play here. Wide range igniting bar, narrow range resting bar, entries right there, stops right there, peekaboo's up, stops out, and then goes higher. In the 84% play, just a beautiful thing, by the way, but we're not talking about that today. So three bar play, full stop out, lost an R. Actual, lost an R. Trading plan, lost an R. Follow the plan, yup. So your result versus the trading plan is the same. Good. So now you have five trades and you followed it three out of five times 60%. 60% is not good enough, hint, hint. Last example here. What do we have? Gap down, wide range red bar followed by a narrow range resting bar. This is actually quite a nice three bar play. Right near a whole number at 135. Your stop loss like 135.75. It looks good. Peekaboo is below. Goes right back up. Three bar play, stopped out, lost an R. Actual, 500, minus 500. Trading plan, minus 500, same. Wow. Four out of six times. 
So four out of six times is what? Somewhere around 67%. Two thirds of the time, you follow your plan. And you think to yourself, can't be that bad, right? I follow my plan most of the time. And technically speaking, you wouldn't be statistically lying to yourself. I do follow my plan most of the time. But 67% is not enough. Okay, it's got to be in the high 90s. It's got to be, there's got to be a nine in front of how frequently you follow your plan. All right, preferably 100%. But we're human, we'll make some mistakes. And if you're going to make a mistake, make a good mistake. Make a reasonable mistake. Like, hey, you're doing 3RO or nothing and you sold for 2.7R. That's a reasonable mistake. Is it a mistake you should be making all the time? No, but you cost 0.3R. You didn't cost yourself 2 or 3 or 4R. That's a reasonable mistake. You still shouldn't make it. So now, what happens? Well, let's take a look. Six trades, actual trading plan. Difference, minus 500, minus 750. So, out of six trades, on a $500 risk, you cost yourself $1,250. You actually made 150 bucks, okay? Your plan made 1400 on two trades. And guess what? It's not that crazy. You got nervous, so you sold for one R instead of two. Over here, you had a breakout that really didn't look good. It looked like shit. I get the emotion. I trade breakouts. Oh, this thing's not gonna work. Test almost stops, comes back up. Test almost stops, come back. You're like, this thing is really not gonna work. I'm, it's dead man walking. I'm on death row and it's dead man walking. And then magically, your plan turns around and 1.5 R later, hits your target. So right here, you cost yourself 2.5 R in six trades. And did you notice? Tell me I'm lying here, because I know what happens to you. When they stop, they stop, and you stop too. You notice when they just peekaboo, peekaboo over and just drop? Let's go back real quick. Notice like this type of trade right there. The little three bar play kind of peekaboos and then stops. You take a full stop and your plan takes a full stop. So yeah, when they stop out, you probably follow your plan pretty closely. Every once in a while, you'll get away with one like the breakout where maybe it peekaboos over, you get out for break even and it stops out and you save yourself an R. It happens, it happens, it happens, okay? So if you multiply this, sorry, this is 1500, my bad, okay? If you multiply this, by 10, because that's 60 trades a month, right? Let's say this is like a, you take three trades a day. That's reasonable, 20 trading days. You'll see it on the next slide. That month, you would have made 13 grand. Instead, you made 1,500. 50% batting average doesn't change. You have the same batting average, but your win-loss ratio is significantly different. Your win-loss ratio is the size of your average winner divided by the size of your average loser. So if your average winner is $100 and your average loser is $50, your win-loss ratio is 2.0. In this case, this is a pretty good batting average for a 1.87 win-loss ratio, but it's not a good enough batting average for a 1.09 win-loss ratio. It's not good enough, okay? It's not good enough. So the question is this. Talk to me. How expensive is breaking your plan and selling too soon? Not a big deal? Eh, no big thing. 20 trading days a month. Three trades a day is 60 trades a month. You might take a little more, you might take a little less. For example, purposes, we'll keep it at 60. 12 months a year, again, you might take a vacation and miss a month. Fine. Example purposes. 720 trades a year. What if... On every six trades, you're minus 1250 versus your trading plan. So for every six trades, how much is that over a year? It's $150,000. Still think you can't go broke taking profits? Both of those trades that your plan beat you on, wait for it. Let's go back just for fun. Both of the trades 
that your plan beat you on were profitable trades for you. You made 500 on the first trade, you made 250 on trade four, both were profitable. But your plan made two grand on those two trades and you made 750 bucks. You can't go broke taking profits. You took a profit on trade one and you took a profit on trade four. No, it's exactly how most traders go broke. It's exactly what they do and don't get me wrong. You know what feeds the fire, feeds the habit, feeds the addiction? The one or two trades that you beat your plan on, that one trade that has a shitty, crappy breakout and you make a hundred bucks on it and your plan loses 500 and you're like, see that? I beat my plan by five or $600. And that just keeps the wheel going. It enables you to justify doing it again. And you'll do it again. And you won't realize the true cost of it because most people don't track their trades and at the end of the month, they don't realize just how expensive what they're doing is. It's 150 grand expensive in this analogy. That's the difference between 15 grand a year and 150 grand a year or whatever it comes out to. That's the difference between saying, yes, boss, I'll come in on Saturday and finish those TPS reports versus going like this to your boss. That's the difference. That little silliness of thinking you're better than your plan is a pretty expensive mistake. Your ego, it's writing checks your body can't cash. But hey, your boss thanks you. Your boss thinks you're a great employee. Your boss loves you. Do what you're told when you're told to do it how you're told to do it. And you'll do it again on Monday, because guess what? You got no choice. And you did it to yourself. You got no choice. You got to work for the man. Because you can't follow rules. You're a line stepper, a habitual line stepper, and you don't know what to do about it. All over two trades. Again, this should be 1500 I apologize. All right? So it should be like 18000 all right, should be 1,500 here, should be 18,000. 60 trades a month for a year, 50% batting average, does it make a difference? Damn right it makes a difference. Definitely make an 18 grand a year and 160 grand a year. One's the difference in freedom, one's the difference working for your boss. I don't know, what do you think? So then you ask yourself, why? Why am I doing what I do? Well, there's a lot of reasons to that. Maybe you're trading scared money. Maybe your timeline is too short, right? Maybe you need more time. That's possibility, honestly. There, sometimes we just need a little more time. Maybe your management isn't very conducive to who you are, right? And that's a real possibility. You might have a management strategy that on paper looks really good, but in reality is not good for you. All right, so the tighter you manage guys, the more profit you're protecting, but you also have a greater chance of being stopped out at that particular level. The looser you manage, the larger the target you'll reach, but you're gonna protect less and potentially give back more. Example, on SQ yesterday, I was up $5,000 on SQ yesterday, 5R. I finished the day up 1,300 bucks on SQ. I was doing end of the day hold, I was looking for a big run, never came. And it did come. I mean, four thousand or five thousand bucks is a good move, right? But it came all the way back. That's the example of higher targets, but willing to give some more back. Hence, management's a give and take, and management's always about expectation. So I'm not suggesting you can just go from zero to hero. You know, you hate your boss, you hate your job, and then just quit. It's not American Beauty. We can't all just go quit and work at a burger joint. I suppose we could, but it would be tough. You have to stair step and work your way up into that, right? And I'm not saying guys, as you'll see on the next slide, you'll see it on the next slide. I'm not saying which management's right for you. I'm not telling you that three R all or nothing is what you should do. I'm not telling you that pivot management's what you should do. I'm not telling you that scalping is what you should do. Nowhere in here did I tell you how to manage. But what I did say is when you put something on paper, you follow it. Otherwise, don't put it down on paper. Don't even bother with it. Just go back to your day job. It'll save you a lot of time, stress, frustration, and probably money too. 
And you'll see that here on the next slide. Lots of ways to manage. Lots of ways to get to the same place. All right. So what do we have? We have the same result, right? 40% batting average with a 2.75 win-loss ratio. That means 2.7 R targets. Four winners, you get 11 R in gains. Six losers, you lose six R. Well, 11 minus six is five R. So after every 10 trades you take, you'll make five R. So if you took 60 trades a month, reasonable three a day, you'd make 30 R. 50% batting average with a 2.0 win-loss ratio. Five winners, five losers. Oh, you make 5R. And then at the end of the month, you make 30. What if you had a 60% batting average, but you only shot for smaller winners, 1.5R winners? Same situation. Six winners equals 9R. Six times 1.5 is 9. For those of you that do math outside of Oregon, okay? I don't know how they do it in Oregon and up there in the Northwest. Get whatever answer you, you know you feel like getting. But in the rest of the world, six times 1.5 is nine. Four losers is minus four R. After 10 trades, you'd make five R. It's 30 R a month. What if you had a 70% batting average with a 1.15 win-loss ratio? That basically means you're getting out just above one R, right? You're getting, literally you're shooting for basically one R, just above seven winners. 8R in gains, roughly. It's like 8.05. But again, sometimes I feel like doing math in Oregon and it's just whatever I want it to be. Okay? Three losers, it's 3R in losses. After 10 trades, you make 5R. Guess what? Four different approaches, same place. What if you had a 30% batting average? Well, now you got to make more when you win. So the lower your batting average is, you need to make more per trade. The higher your batting average is, you need to make a little less per trade, okay? So, <laughs> that's a good one, Dwayne. <laughs> anyway, the point I'm making is, you are not in a box. There's a lot of ways to get to the same spot. Don't think like, this is the only way this can be done. It's not. But there is only one way it can be done. And that's by following whatever it is you put down. You can't choose something and then not do it. That, no, there's no flexibility there. I don't care which one of these you choose, and there's 50 other ones you could choose that I don't care that you choose. Just understand, if you choose it, do it, right? It's kind of like when your mom says, hey, if you take that much food on your plate, eat it, right? Eat it. Don't take all that food and waste it. Eat it follow it. Okay. And remember, this is in a nice, neat little box here, right? I mean, trading in the real world isn't that way. You're going to have months where you're shooting for two RL or nothing, and you might have a 30% batting average. You might have months where you have a 60% batting average, but the goal is to be somewhere around 50, 48, 52, 47, 51, whatever. Be close, be near it. Be in the ballpark. But just remember, everything is a give and take. Who are you? Which one are you? Where do you fit in? Tighter management, looser management. Remember, and we talked about this last week. Manage it on those pivots? Sweet. You're going to get some 8R trades, 10R trades. You're also going to get some 5R trades that finish the day plus 1R. I know it happened to me yesterday on two trades, actually. One was only up 3R, finished at 1.2. The other was up 5R, finished at 1.3. Actually, I ended up making 3R yesterday, so it was a little better than that, okay? And I could have made eight. Oh, well. One of these days, that 15R day is going to happen, right? But if this isn't for you, you might try to go for the 70% batting average and shoot for 1R targets. And to do that, you might want to do bar by bar management. We talked last week about a hybrid approach. Okay, so there's some, some overlap between last week's lecture and this week. So you just have to kind of look around and go, well, where do I want to be in this spectrum? And it's a broad spectrum, okay? 80% batting average down to maybe 20 or 
you're probably not going to do much better than 80 and you're probably not going to do much worse than 20 or 25. You're probably going to, let's call it 25 to 75%. You're probably going to be in that range. So understand where you are in that range and what you need to make that range profitable and then do it. Don't go back and find yourself looking like this. This is ridiculous, right? It's ridiculous. Two trades cost you that much money? And over the course of the year, it cost you that much money? Because you're going to continually do it. And let's be honest, when you step over the line once, you'll do it again. I hate using this analogy, but if somebody cheats once, what are the odds that's the only time they'll ever cheat in their entire life? Slim. Yeah, it's just one one night stand. That was it. Come on. So ask yourself, pivots, bar by bar, all or nothing, hybrid. How am I going to get where I want to be? Well, there's a lot of different roads to get to the same destination. Which one do you choose? Again, it will take a little bit of trial and error. I don't expect you to pick the first one and then right out of the gates be like, yep, I have my lifetime management. I'm done. I don't expect that to happen. Okay, but then again, can you handle the pullbacks? Your double bottom retest, it moves up, breaks out, pulls back. Well, right here, you're in down here at $79.25. And when this stock's up at 81 bucks, you're up $1.75, right? On a 30, 40 cent stop loss. You're up $1.75 on a 30 or 40 cent stop loss. You ain't got nothing protected. Not much anyway. Maybe right here you raise your stop to $79.50. Can you handle that pullback? Can you handle that pullback that you're up 4R on, pulls you all the way back to plus 1R? This, this is where the mirror becomes really handy. I want you to really look at this chart. I'm not joking with you because this is real. This is reality. This is a five minute intraday chart. You get in at $79.25 with literally like a 35 cent stop loss. And at one point in the trade, you are over $81. It's $1.75. Let's do the math right here. 1.75 1. 1. divided by 0.35. 5 to 1, you're up. You're up 5R. And it pulls all the way back to plus 1. What are you doing? You getting out of it on this pullback because you can't handle it? And what happens? Pivots, goes back up, ends the day. 81.56R. Oh, shit. I got out at 2R because this big-ass red bar scared the crap out of me. And it pivoted and went higher and finished day up six. Well, guess what? That's not going to work. But that doesn't mean there isn't a different type of management that might work better for you. For example, you might find out after doing this or having this experience, gosh, you know what? 2R seems to be that happy medium for me, right? It seems to be that balance where... You're like, you know, I'm pretty good with that. And I don't feel FOMO if they rip higher afterwards. So I'm going to get out of 2R. And then you don't care anymore. That's fine. Other people say, no, I'm good with the pivots, man. Let it pop. Let it pull back. Let it rip. I'll manage it out. We'll be okay. I'll win some. I'll lose some. But when I win, I'm going to win big. Again, to repeat myself. Okay? Don't lie to the person in the mirror. Because this is the only person you have to answer to at the end of the day. Well, check that. You'll have to answer to your boss if you lie to the person in the mirror. You're basically taking the choice off the table. By the choice you made, the actions you gave, you're taking your other choices off the table. Same situation here. You're going to manage it bar by bar. You're going to manage it on pivots. What are you going to do? Either way, it doesn't matter. It's what your plan says to do. Okay? And like I said over here, you're going to have times where you're up a ton. And there's nothing protected. I took this trade. I was up a ton. I mean, this thing went from 40, 46 all the way to 46. I'm mean, up $5.50. Nothing protected. Nothing. I did sell a quarter at 2R. Just did this and went sideways and went sideways and went sideways. And by the end of the day, it actually closed pretty nicely, right? And we're up. 5R, but guess what? It didn't break 46, didn't hit the high of the day, but that's okay. It's up to you. Can you handle it? 
Does it work for you? Does it make sense for you? Those are questions that only you can answer. All right. Can you handle, for example, getting in at 51, watch it go to 56, and then end the day at 53? Let me repeat this because I want you to really absorb this one. Can you handle getting into a stock at $51 with a 50 cent stop loss? And it goes $5, you're up almost 10 to 1, 9 to 1, $9,000. And it ends the day at 53. Sure, you still made four grand, right? I mean, you did, $51. Up to $53 is four to one in this case. You made four grand, but you could have made nine. This is a, a great example of a stock that ripped, it went even higher, and then left a big topping tail. You still made money, but not as much as you could have. Can you handle that? I don't know, only you know. So, you choose. Frustration, knowing you left money on the table or perhaps losing on a trade that you should have profited from. I don't know, how do you handle that situation? Are you okay with it? Good, then do all or nothing and be done with it. Knowing your trades produce good results but being unable to see them through to their targets. That's annoying, super frustrating. How many of you out there at the end of the month, literally you tell your spouse or your friends or anyone else and you're like, if I could just follow my plan, I could quit my job because I'm taking good trades. And every time I go back and I look and I'm like, I made a grand last month but my plan made 10. How many traders tell that to themselves? I did that early on in my career. Every Sunday I'm watching football and I'm just sitting there. I'm like zombie watching football, right? It's on the screen, but you're not really watching it. Your eyes are glassed over and you're sitting there thinking, I made a thousand bucks this week and I should have made 10. Or I made a thousand this month and I should have made 20 or whatever the number is. If I could, dot, dot, dot. If I could just, dot, dot, dot. If I stop selling too soon, dot, dot, dot. If I take a couple more trades, dot, dot, dot. If I wouldn't let that one loser ruin all my profits, dot, dot, dot. It's frustrating, isn't it? That's when you're lying to the person in the mirror. So it's basically the eventual failure of your business, right? If you continue this process, three things are going to happen. You'll draw down your account and be forced to quit. You'll quit out of frustration and join the legions of failed traders with all the excuses for why it didn't work. The people that give the industry a bad name. Well, they're just lucky. You'll hit the wall and finally begin the challenging process of change. That's basically it. Three is your best choice. All of them are painful. None of them. See, this is, this is what I find fascinating about all of this. None of these three choices are like, you know, sunshiny day. They're all crap. So why not choose the one that gives you the chance to make money? See what I'm saying? If they're all going to be frustrating, because they will be, why not pick the one that actually gives you an opportunity to make money? Which is number three. You got to ask yourself that. And Jordan, you're absolutely right. The line between unprofitable, break even, and profitable is really, really small. This is what the point I'm trying to make to you guys. We looked at two trades every two days, basically one trade a day. If you think of it like that, one trade a day is the difference between you being profitable and unprofitable, managing it differently on that one trade. It's pretty crazy. So then ask yourself, well, how am I going to get this done? How's this? What's this look like? Am I going to core trade, swing trade, intraday trade? Options, credit spreads, Forex? What stocks will I trade? What patterns will I use? Write it all down. Be very specific about it. And then once you do that, ask yourself, what do I need to do to hit the goal I want? Say the goal is 100 grand a year. Well, what do I need to do to make 100 grand a year? I don't know. You need to break it down. Tell me what type of trading you're going to do. Swing trading, core trading, intraday swing, whatever. Tell me how many trades it's going to take, what risk level. That doesn't mean you're doing that today. It means that's where you want to be. And you need to start somewhere. So everybody has the what, right? Everybody does. I want a Lamborghini. Well, how are you going to get a, a Lamborghini? Crap cars, by the way. How are you going to get it? It's not true. The Huracan's actually nice. How are you going to get it? Well, working nine to five for $15 an hour is not going to work. But that could be a stepping stone to your Lamborghini. What's the analogy there? Well, $5 risk isn't going to get me a Lamborghini, but it could be a stepping stone to getting me that freedom and flexibility that I want, to quitting my job, to being able to trade from anywhere I want. It doesn't have to be material stuff. 
So you're right. There it is. Jordan's paying attention. Outcome goals without process goals are just pipe dreams. Gosh, I love it when people pay attention. So how are you going to get there? I can tell you one way you're not going to get there is by breaking the plan that you wrote down on paper. And again, you're going to break it here or there in the beginning. But what does that allow you to do? Make tweaks and adjustments. You make an adjustment to the race car, you go out back on the track, and then you come back in with what? New information. What's the car doing? Well, it's got a little bit of a push. Okay. Yeah, the oversteer is pretty bad. Okay. Let's make an adjustment. So you have this plan now, and you recognize after a month, you're like, okay, well, what is the biggest thing I'm struggling with with this plan? It's this over here. How do I know that? Because my journal and my tracking spreadsheet says so. Okay. Make an adjustment. Back it off a little bit. Top fuel dragster, you smoke the tires. You got to back the clutch off a little bit. Trading's no different. Okay? If you don't do these things, okay? <laughs> you guys are killing me. If you don't do these things, you're never going to be a profitable trader. You're going to be that person. Let me show it one last time. One last time. You're going to be the person that looks like this. You'll get to a point where you make some money. Yeah, me 10, 20 grand. But you'll never get to this point where you get to quit your job, where you make 100, 200, 500, whatever it is that you're going for. Those little mistakes are very, very expensive, right? Those little mistakes are very, very expensive. So I hope you guys learned a little bit about the minutia, fine tuning your trading, how important following your plan is, how expensive those little mistakes are. And again, some of the mistakes are egregious, you know, like holding a stock overnight that you did not intend to hold overnight with day trading share size and no stop loss, Joseph. Those things are foolish. And you'll make a couple of those and hopefully not too many. But it's a really important lecture, guys. I mean it. It's really important. It's one of those game changers. It's really one of those game changers because sometimes you guys think things are too simple to be a game changer. It doesn't have to be that way. You need to go back and look and go, where am I messing up? And if you don't know, it's because you're not tracking because when you track, it should be right in front of you. All right. So I hope you guys learned a little bit about being a better trader. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week. Mm -hmm.